The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 246. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yap-Chan, and today I have a phenomenal woman on the show today. She is a filmmaker and a director, and I'm just, you know, excited to have her on and share her story and tips with us on self-confidence. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Megan Wong. Megan, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to our listeners. I'm doing great, thanks. I hope you're doing well, too. I live and work in Los Angeles. I actually have a full-time job as a writer's assistant on a TV show for stars that's coming out hopefully next year called The Counterpart. But in my spare time, I direct music videos, and I've directed music videos for Mitski and Skylar Spence, and that's what I do for fun, kind of, because I, I hope to be directing features in the next few years. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And Megan, what's your cultural background? My dad is from Hong Kong. He's of Chinese descent. My mother is actually Swedish American, so I'm half Asian. Thanks for sharing that. And what would be your favorite self-confidence quote? Oh, my favorite self-confidence quote is by Billy Wilder, who's definitely one of my favorite filmmakers. It's trust your own instinct. Your mistakes might as well be your own instead of someone else's. And I really love that quote because... In my own lifetime, I've had trouble not second-guessing myself and not just doing what I think is right. And often that results in situations that I don't actually like. So I've been a lot happier knowing that I should just believe in myself and my own vision and what I want to do. That's a great quote that you mentioned, and it's true. We're so, you know, as as women, especially Asian women, you know, we tend to second-guess ourselves because... You know, we've been told what to do all all our lives. It's like we can't make our own decisions and we're so afraid that when we do, it's going to screw us over. But, you know, sometimes it can, you know, whatever we decide and whatever we feel and have that, you know, that gut feeling, it's telling us that, you know, we're going in the right direction, even if it doesn't look like it at times. So great quote that you mentioned. And in your own words, how would you define self-confidence? I think self-confidence is the refusal to give up. And keep going even when you don't believe other people believe in your ability or they just simply don't believe in your ability. It's just tenacity for me because it's so easy, I think, to just say, I'm going to go home and binge this Netflix show and I'm not going to do what I really want to be doing because that's easier and safer and I'm not going to be pushing any buttons. But if you just keep trying, that's the best way to get what you want, I think. I totally agree with you. I mean, you know, it's it's never giving up on your dreams, your mission, and what you're meant to do. And, you know, we're going to go through obstacles. We're going to go through hard times. We're going to have days that we just we just don't feel 100%, but we keep moving forward, forward regardless of that. Or, and like you said, regardless of what people think of you, because you're not going to be able to please everybody anyway. So you might as well do the stuff that you want to do. So I love that definition that you mentioned. And Megan, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? Well, as I mentioned before, I often did question myself and assumed other people probably knew better than I did. I often deferred to them. I think that has a little bit to do with how I grew up. My parents put a lot of emphasis on being smart, and they always told me, you're really smart. You're a really smart person. But the problem with that is that it definitely gave me a feeling of imposter syndrome. Like, well, what if they find out that I'm not smart? What if that's all a hoax? And so I I definitely suffered a lot from like perfectionism and being scared of failure and just not living up to what my parents or my teachers or my friends or other people around me define, how they defined me. And so it was, I had really, I really had to learn how to define myself. And that also probably comes from the fact that I am biracial. So when I travel in Asia, people literally come up to me and they're like, you're not Asian. <laughs> like, yes, I am. But in the U.S., I look pretty Asian. I have an Asian last name. And people are like, oh, you're so Chinese. You're so Asian. It's like, well, yeah, I might look that way, but I'm also half Asian. So it's a little hard when you're 
in both spaces and you're not necessarily fully accepted by either one. And so I think those things were hard for me before I sort of just realized like, this is who I am and that's fine. Thanks for sharing that. And I know it's probably, um, you know, what most people go through, especially, you know, people who do have, who are biracial, right? Because they've said this before, like at before, like they had no idea where they belong because the one, the one um, race wouldn't accept them and the other one wouldn't. So it's like, they're stuck in the middle not realizing they can just be their own person. And like you said, you know, you just dis- went ahead and defined yourself. And what was that moment in your life when you realized that? That What was that aha moment? I think, you know, I went to Wesleyan University and I went there to study math and science. I thought I would major in physics or chemistry. And I ended up changing my major to film studies and mathematical economics because I was still trying to please my parents. So I studied mathematical economics. But when I changed to film studies... I remember I took a sight and sound class, which was a filmmaking class, and it honestly, it really opened up my eyes to, it felt good to be creating art, something of my own vision. And the first project that we had was called the editing project. And we basically, you know, just shot some images and edited it together. It's called the rhythm project, sorry. And we edited it to a rhythm. And I remember that I worked really hard on creating these very, like, repetitious, interesting images with pipes and, like, these balls hanging on the pipes and everything. And I edited it. And then at the last minute, I had sort of, like, a panic attack that it wasn't right. And I just randomly changed it for no reason. Like, truly no reason. I changed it for no reason. And I ended up not getting a very good grade on it. And then my friend who had seen the version before I changed it was like, I thought yours was the best one. Why did you change it? And I realized that me under like undermining myself and not doing what I had originally intended, like ended up being a product I didn't want to make. And it didn't even, it wasn't even the grade. It was just that fact that I let my own anxiety and fear of it being wrong actually ruin something that I was making. So that really taught me that I have to trust my own instincts at every step of the way. And even over the course of that, I've still had moments where I've been like, oh, I don't know, like, should we be doing this? But it's just constantly correcting that and being like, this is your art. This is your vision. Do what you want to do. Because that's why we're all here. And that's why you're probably, that's probably why I'm self-financing it. That's probably why all these people have agreed to do me the favor of helping me out because they are trying to help me create something. And that's something that I've really had to learn and embrace. Thanks for sharing that. And I think, you know, we're all guilty of that, right? You know, we have that first project and, you know, we don't trust ourselves. We think we can't produce something that great or no one's going to watch it or see it or listen to it. Not realizing the first, you know, your first instinct is always what you go with. And when we try to change it, we kind of force something that's not a part of us. And sometimes that's why it might not work as well as the first time when we put our heart and soul into it. And, you know, this is just a great realization that, you know, whatever you put your heart into, it will create great things. It will be, you know, something that you can call your own, something you can be proud of. And, you know, like I said, not everyone's going to resonate with what you do, but there are the right people who will see, you know, that the work that you do, the art that you do and say, you know what, that was great. What else can you create? And, you know, because of that realization, what's your life been like, Megan? I've just been a lot more inclined and willing to take risks. I think that I just have a healthier relationship to, you know, whenever I pitch a music video or anything, I make it very clear that I want to do something that the artists also want to do, but it also needs to be my vision, especially if I'm, you know, not given a lot of money or I'm putting some of my own money into it. You know, I I want it to, to make sure that it's something really important to me, a story that I can tell. So I think that that's something I've learned through self confidence that I have a right to have that feeling, like a right to want to make sure that things that I make reflect who I am. Thanks for sharing that. I really like that you said, you know, the things that you do, you know, reflects who you are. And, you know, that's something that's kind of missing in the world sometimes, having that authentic self be seen in your work. And, you know, I think it's just truly important because we can show others that we don't have to hide behind a mask. We can just be ourselves and be okay. And, you know, that work will attract you know the universe it'll attract you to the right things and people in your life and you know to the woman who's listening to your episode you know she may be in her own journey of self-confidence what would be that one tip you would give to her i would just say you just can't hold yourself back you have to try and make mistakes do things that might feel uncomfortable i think feeling uncomfortable and afraid can ultimately be a good thing if you learn how 
to enjoy it. I actually like when I start a project and I'm scared and I don't know how it's going to turn out or I do something and it's unknown. And instead of letting that make me nervous, I just try to embrace it and say, yeah, like I am scared, but that's good. This will turn out better because I have fear and fear, just seeing fear as a healthy thing and not as just something negative. Thanks for sharing those tips. And I like that you mentioned see fear as something healthy because, you know, if when you feel the fear and do it anyway, and you can get over, get over that fear, just gives you that really big boost of confidence. It's like, what else can I overcome? What else can I do? So, you know, we all go through it. I mean, I still get scared doing interviews. Like I still, you know, get a little jittery, but I still keep on doing it. I was nervous to do this interview. (laughs) I was like, I don't know what it'll be like. You know, I don't want to make a mistake, but you just have to do it and try not to think about it. And it's a process. I'm sure we'll never stop feeling that way to a certain degree. It's just doing it enough that you know you can overcome it. It's a familiar fear that you know it will go away. Totally. I totally agree with you. It's just, you know, practice makes progression. And I truly believe that. And thanks again for those tips. And if our listeners want to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? Yeah, they can check out my website. It's my name, which has many vowels, M-A-E-G-A-N-H-O-U-A-N-G.com. And they can probably find me on Twitter, which my handle is at my last name, M. So at Wong M, H-O-U-A-N-G-M. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that, Megan. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with Megan, you can also head on over to the TaoSelfConfidence.com and search for Megan's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else we talked about. And I just want to thank Megan for taking the time to share her story and tips with us on self-confidence. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It was an awesome time having you on and share your story. So listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of the Tao of Self-Confidence. Get your free self-talk tape for building self-confidence by visiting our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits.